Hey, what's up, Liron here? If you're making mistakes in your paintings and you're having a hard time recognizing what they are, today I'm gonna show you a cycle where I recognize a mistake, work towards fixing it. It's gonna be really interesting and really educational. So we're gonna paint these lovely bell peppers. What I love about them is that variety in shapes um, of shadows where you get some sh smooth transitions, some, some harsh <laughs> edges, and the colors are really interesting in my opinion. So first off, the drawing process, I'm running through it, skipping some of the details, but mainly I'm establishing the entire shape of the bell peppers, and I slowly work towards the specific details. Now, I will put a link below if you want to get this exact same sketch and just paint based on that, but look at even the way I build the base of the bell pepper. I draw that circle and only then I put in this stem, right? We start with the overall composition of all three and then I'm starting to put in the details. This is something that will improve with practice. It's not easy in the beginning and that is okay. I'm adding the shadow underneath them, another very important component for framing the bell peppers. Now you're gonna see where I start to get in trouble. It's gonna happen a little later on with the use of my pyrrole scarlet red and I actually came to some great insights in this process and you'll see them. So I'm drawing where the highlights are gonna be because that's the main element that pops out. And here we go with the painting stage. I have a very pale uh, yellow here. Now, I want to share with you a specific way of improving control here. And that is being very selective on what you wet. So what I'm doing now is working solely on this bell pepper that's on the right. And you're gonna see, that's Ruth, hopefully you can't hear the barking too badly. Uh, and you're gonna see how I'm not moving away from this bell pepper until I'm fully happy with it. And then once I am, I am touching the uh, area of the shadow and allowing them to blend quite freely, which creates a very nice effect. Now, um, so this is pretty much just going over the bell pepper, filling it up with very pale, very watery wash. This is maybe 10% paint, something like that, 1090. And then I'm slowly adding a bit more to the wash and I'm starting to darken the whole thing, okay? Now, when you look at the reference photo, you'll notice there's a very clear, nice kind of orangey shadow on the lower, I guess, half of the bell pepper and that's the main thing I'm trying to capture here. So slowly but surely I'm adding just touches of more yellow and ultimately a bit more red. Now colors don't matter as much but if you want to know I'm actually using uh, Turner's Yellow, if I'm not mistaken, by Schmenka, together with Lemon Yellow by Daniel Smith, and now I'm adding Pyrrol Scarlet by Daniel Smith as well. Pyrrol Scarlet is very fiery, very warm. Um, so. I find it's actually great for mixing with the yellow, but where it catches me off guard, and you'll see this in a few seconds, is when we actually need to rely on that. Now look at how thick my mix on the right is getting to be. That's very important. If you want the shape to be preserved once this, the paint spreads wet and wet, you need to have something strong. If the paper is, is wet, you need something uh, thick to counter it. The only way to learn how to do this properly is by practice. You have to experience this. Pre-wet the paper, see how it acts when you pour in paint. See how different consistencies of paint act, okay? Now we're going dark, because I'm finished with that bell pepper on the right, and I'm ready to, guess what? Merge it with the shadow underneath. Only once I'm happy with what I have, do I move on to a different shape. Do I expand outside of that bell pepper. And you're gonna see in a few seconds, I become a little greedy and I try to paint too much too fast. And what happens is what you're gonna ex um, uh, experience in a second here. Now, I want you to notice something. The bell pepper is still quite wet and the shadow underneath is quite dark. What this does is it makes the orange yellow bleed down into, thanks to gravity as well, into the dark shadow. And that's a lovely effect. That's something I'm actually very happy with and I wanna have some loose edges, right? And you also saw me pre-wetting the right side of the shadow and then painting it very dark. And as soon as the water touches that shadow, it spreads out and that's a beautiful effect. We're gonna see this on the other side as well. This is very satisfying if you can place two shapes next to one another one very wet, one very uh, dry, and see how they mix together. There's something really fun about this. And it's an aspect of watercolor that I 
learn to appreciate more and more with time. Now, as I'm putting the shadow under that bell pepper on the left, you're telling yourself, okay, I'm doing, here I'm pre-wetting. This is, is important, pre-wetting, and then coming back with dark paint. Look at how it spreads as soon as it touches the wet area. Um, now, you may be asking yourself, okay, I'm doing th an opposite uh, process here. First, I did the bell pepper, then the shadow. Now, I'm doing the shadow and then going up to the bell pepper. Yes, that is true, and that is okay. What I could have done is let this dry fully, and only then move on to the bell pepper. But I decide I want to have that same beautiful transition between the pepper and the shadow again. So I have to work fast and move down with that red paint until it touches the shadow while it's still a little moist at least. But here's where things get a little dicey. This red, Pyrrol Scarlet, I just today finally learned something very important about it. And that is, you have to be very careful when mixing it with other colors because you're basically diluting its vibrancy and you have to be very careful with darkening it and you have to do that slowly and deliberately. Now you don't have to do anything, right? The reason I use the word have to is for the use that I'm trying to achieve here, that's what I had to do and I messed it up. So right now you're seeing a 85% Pyrrol Scarlet, 15% some mess that I had on the palette or in the well of the Pyrrol Scarlet. And that is grave danger. One more mistake I'm making, and don't worry, we're going to fix a lot of these later on, is leaving those very bright highlights at the bottom that actually play no role. If you look at the original reference photo, they're barely noticeable. They're not important, that's for sure. And I should have probably covered them all up. That's okay. Also, these highlights are still quite jarring and I'll need to blend some of the edges, which I will attempt to do. You'll see me do that in a few seconds. <coughs> but it was a little too late for some of them. This thing happens and that's okay. The result I still love quite a bit. Um, but we're looking at small um, improvements that, that could be done to this like very easily, actually, by just putting a bit more awareness onto them. Now, here's where I get greedy. Instead of just focusing on that bell pepper, I'm starting to think about the one above it. And as soon as I'm done with putting in that green section in the middle, and by the way, to mix that green, I'm just adding phthalo blue, same yellows, kind of all of them together. Um, I am using a bit of sap green later on, but that's because I know it works well with my colors here. But again, I'm only using like four colors in total. Colors don't matter as much, just use three, the same three for everything, mix them, let them do their thing. Um, we will talk about an important insight in a few seconds when it comes to mixing colors as well. Um, and how maybe in the beginning you want to stick to primary colors because under those greens, there is a very strong yellow just like on the bell pepper on the right, which I just did yellow instead of a green. Uh, but in any case, greedy, greedy me, let's continue with the next bell pepper while they still touch. And the problem is with that, I should have devoted more attention to the bell pepper down below. Now here is me mixing, I mixed a very dark kind of a cool uh, gray. So a bluish gray, and I'm using that for the shadows. Now my thinking in terms of values is, is okay, it's pretty close, but here's where I messed up. I should have darkened with more red. Again, I should have been much more careful when diluting my red, and you will see me improve this later on, and you'll see it's a major difference, okay? Now, nothing is lost, don't get me wrong, and you'll see me both improve this and also do another experiment that shows what the better way is. So nothing is lost until it's fully done and everything is black on your paper, basically, and, and that, even then you can paint with opaque white and bring back every highlight you want and every mid value you want even. But in any case, and it could be an interesting challenge, I should try that. Again, these red highlights down below, too jarring. Now here I realized, ooh, I went too blue and too cool. So I'm bringing back very dark red, which is a combination of my Pyrrol Scarlet and Quinacridone Rose, which I find is a good one to darken reds, but it's too little, too late. I already went quite cool um, and that's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. Uh, but moving along, I'm going to go and repeat that process with my uh, other bell pepper, pretty much the same, uh, just you see, I kind of messed up the, the yellow one on the way. You have to be very careful with these rounded lines uh, and when working around different objects. But already, if you zoom out here, to me at least, the yellow bell pepper is much more satisfying than the red ones. And that's because I went too strong with the darks and even the red I would argue is too strong for both bell peppers. I should have built it up a little slower. 
I'm going to show you how I fix it again later on. But in any case, at least now I'm starting to shade with the same bl uh, red, but it's still a little too strong, okay? But I, I realized, okay, it was a mistake to go directly to the black uh, quinacridone rose mixed with phthalo blue. With, with It was too much, too fast. So now I at least build it up slowly, okay? Now, as a final kind of stage, I mix a slightly neutral bluish green. Uh, honestly, didn't put too much... Um, thought into that, went with my intuition, felt like a nice muted bluish green would fit well here. That's sometimes the case. And then I'm charging wet and wet in it just to establish some, some basic form of the stem. So you'll notice we have one that's a little blue, one on the yellow side. So the two green areas look a little different. Now, talking about green areas, let's get that third bell peppers uh, shadow. Now everything is dry. Everything on the paper is dry and I can work at my leisure to really establish the stem the way I want it to look. And I think this is the most successful probably out of the three because I had the most time to work on it, the most time to think on it. Uh, because again, no pressure, no uh, wet and wet at all from the beginning of working on the stem. And it has an underwash of yellow. That's something I'm now starting to realize the importance of. I could skip it, skip just paint around the stem, and then this would be the first layer on paper white. But then I would not get the benefit of the yellow underneath, which is a benefit actually here, because under that green, it feels like there's a bit of a yellow. So this is something that's still a little vague to me as a concept. I see people do beautiful glazes of red on top of blue and it works well. People that start shading with an awkward color, but it's not awkward. They, they know what they're doing and they know the fundamentals, which I appear to lack. Um, so it's something I'm definitely going to be working on. You'll see hopefully improvement in that regard. Uh, but in any case, I'm filling in the darks here and the mid values, slowly building it up. Um, you'll notice that some areas feel a little detached in the stems. That's because they're not dark enough. And you're going to see this with this one too. Notice how I put in the darks, wet and wet. I, I put a dark layer and then a very dark layer, but all of the bottom of that stem should be darker and I will fix it later on. Now it's time to face the music. So I messed it up a bit with the red. Let's glaze another layer and see if it improves it. That was my theory and it actually worked. So we pushed the red to be a little more saturated, a little stronger. But in the process, we're running the risk of pushing that red to be too dark overall. And let me explain what I mean by that. The problem again with Pyrrol Scarlet, which isn't a problem, you just need to learn how to use it, which I didn't know enough about, is once you go past a certain point and get it darker than that, you're gonna lose a lot of the vibrancy of the saturation. If you run into a lot of gray paintings and you're having a hard time getting something saturated, that's the type of saturation I'm talking about. And I have that happen quite a bit with my yellow, with my uh, Pyrrol Scarlet. So I'm getting close, dangerously close to there. And I actually went a little too dark on the bell peppers. I checked it out, black and white in front of black and white reference. It's too dark. So that's something I'm going to be, be fixing soon. But notice how that layer of green over that stem did wonders. Okay, now on to uh, this shadow that... I just couldn't get wet and wet. I pre-wet the area and I go back with more orange. Now, at this point, the yellow bell pepper, even though it's my favorite probably, it's still lacking in a few of the deeper shadows. So I'm doing another go. And this time, not only am I going a little darker, but also a little more orange because it has that orangey quality to it. You can see it. And the beautiful part is I'm going to make use of that smooth transition from earlier. I'm not going to lose it. I'm just going to glaze on top of it with an orange. It's going to look fantastic. As you can see here, I completely preserved it. There's no, no way I would have to lose it to do that. that. Sometimes people are scared to glaze. It's actually okay. You won't lose things underneath as long as you're using good paper. If you're using terrible paper, you're, you may be in danger. Um, so I'm continuing uh, with that stem, slowly building it up again. My favorite stem of the bunch, uh, just because I was probably the most deliberate, the slowest with it. And that's a good thing. Now, I went too dark with the bell pepper on top. It's too dark. That red was too strong. So look at what I'm doing here. I poured a bit of my John Brilliant opaque watercolor straight out of the tube, added a bit of yellow, added a bit of red, pushed it in an attempt to lighten that red using opaque paint. So look at what I'm doing here, going over it and making it just a touch lighter. Now, by mixing with opaque uh, yellowy paint, we're also losing saturation, right? That's the tricky part. So I'm going back with a pure red, wet and wet into the opaque paint. 
here I am darkening that section that really needs darkening. You'll see the difference it makes. But in any case, we're, you're always at a conflict of if I add more opaque paint or more white or more water, I'm going to lose the saturation. But what if I need the color to be lighter? Those are honestly um, concepts I'm still wrapping my head around, still learning. I'm not 100% on them, okay? But in any case, we're getting real close to the end result here. I'm mixing a neutral warm to wrap around just the this area of the yellow bell pepper. Though The reason is it has such a beautiful lightness to it that adding a dark background really complements it. And you'll see, and this is why I'm very selective with where I place that background. I don't need it around the yellow, the red. I just need it around the yellow. And I'm going to leave a white spot on the stem, see? Because it actually is quite light there. Um, I kind of messed up the frame of the bell pepper, so it's okay. We're winging it, we're building it up, cutting a little inside, and that's okay. Uh, I don't tend to obsess on small shapes, uh, but I do try and to improve them whenever I can. And of course, we're going to blend the edge of that shadow because this shadow is not going to wrap around everything. It's just going to be in this beautiful corner, quote unquote, corner of the yellow bell pepper to create some contrast with it. And I think that's a beautiful effect. I rotated the paper so that the wet paint doesn't drip directly into the um, slightly uh, drier paint. And with that, um, just a few more uh, blendings. We are done with this painting. Now, again, insights. What did we learn here? Using Pyrrole Scarlet takes a bit of skill and it's something I'm not skilled enough at. So let me show you how I'm going to improve it with another quick one. Okay, this is going to be a quick, quick process. Um, and this is the final result. Again, I hope you like it. Um, I actually like the colors. And once I added the blues and the orange, I think it works well. But let me show you real fast. And I'm going to jump over the drawing stage because it's not really important. Another attempt that really gets me to understand what I'm doing. So this time, I'm using an underwash of a blue and red. The reason is the highlights seem a little cool. Uh, and even in the previous example, they seemed a little cool. So I'm trying to figure out how to get them to look that way. And look at what happens once I introduce a bit of red into the mix. What happens is it feels very contrasty. That's part of the beauty of art in general is seeing blue next to red. But yet again, I'm going to make the mistake of getting the red to be too neutral. So my thinking was correct in the sense of Putting a cool color will make the red look much more fiery. But I went a little fast and a little too far with the reds. And I'm going to finally fix it in the second attempt of this one. Don't worry. I, I didn't even film the second attempt. I'll just show you the end result. Uh, it's not going to be super long. But look at how these two interact in this first wash. It's actually really nice. And then I figured, hmm, so I have a blue and a red. Why not introduce a bit of yellow as well? Preserve literally all three of my primary colors, which, you know, is something I really enjoy. Left a bit of a highlight there. So, so far, this is fantastic. I'm stoked. I'm like, this is the perfect uh, way to start this painting. But look at what happens once I start uh, darkening. In just a few seconds, I'm going to put in a bit of yellow, start building up the stem. Keep it quite yellow, actually. I'm not gonna, I don't need too much green here. Uh, maybe just a bit wet and wet. But uh, overall, my goal here is to uh, just test and play around with red and figure it out because I was having trouble with it and it bugs me when I don't understand something or why. As soon as you understand why you made a mistake, that's fine. To me, I just did not understand it. And I know, I know that my colors need improvement, but why? What's the improvement necessary? That I wasn't sure about. So here we go. Now, here's the mistake I made. I mixed my red with uh, yellow out of the thought of Previously, in my uh, some of my be red bell peppers, I missed a bit of yellow. And I'm painting around that highlight that I wanted to be a little cooler. So my values work is to kind of make sense. But this mixing with the yellow, to me, was a big mistake. Now, it doesn't mean the result isn't good looking or someone will really like it. It's just not what I was aiming for. Whenever you're consistently aiming for one thing and consistently getting another thing, you want to check yourself because something there doesn't work. And that's what that's what, that's pretty much what happens here. Um, so you'll see while this is wet in just a few more moments, I'll start uh, injecting into it wet and wet. Some more colors, some more um, some, some stronger, darker colors here. I'm just using the Pyrrole Scarlet now above everything. 
just Parallel Scarlet, and then I'm starting to darken with a bit of Queen Acrodon Rose, as I did before. Okay, so I'm kind of repeating the same mistakes I'm making, and then I'm mixing, introducing a bit more Thalo Blue and a bit more Queen Acrodon to really go dark. You will see scans of everything in a, in a second, and it will make much more sense to you. But I lost so much of the saturation, and at this point I, I was so annoyed by it that I decided to try an experiment. Instead of doing what I've been doing here, right? Because look at how muted it is, this annoys me. I did another attempt of just a swatch, and here's what I did, and you're gonna see it in just a second. I just did a thin glaze of red on top of it, another thin glaze of red on top of it, another thin glaze of red. Look at what happens. Look at how much this, even though it's dark, it's too dark, it's more vibrant than what I got here. So let me show you what happened when I applied this to a new identical um, red pepper, okay? Um, here it is. Look at the difference. It's huge. Now, some may prefer this one over the top one. That's okay. But for the purpose of what I was aiming for, this one is better. And look at the difference in the scan. It's quite starking. Um, that's huge to me. Now, it doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean the right one is perfect, the left one is not. The only thing it means is that I was finally able to achieve what I wanted, and that's huge. Uh, I The thing I tried achieving happened. Now, if you look at the original one, it's not even that bad. The red looks quite nice, right? It's not that terrible, but it's still something bugged me, and I feel like after going through this cycle, I understand Pyro Scarlet much better. So, if something bugs you in your painting, and everyone keeps asking questions about, I hate when this happens, I really don't like this, I keep messing that up, if you really have the desire to fix it, dive into the problem. Dive into it, try and isolate it. I isolated it, I just did a swatch of red, and I figured out, okay, if I just use the red as it is, thin glazes, clean, 100% clean. You know, everyone tells me clean my palette. In this instance, I should. Completely clean, that's the only way I can preserve the saturation and beauty of Powell Scarlet. Now, another solution would be to get a more vibrant red. That's definitely another possible solution that I will explore in the future. But I just want to show you problems are there to be solved. And the solution often lies within the problem. By diving into the problem, you will find the solution. So for anyone who struggles with a mistake and you're not sure how to fix it, that's how you fix it. You really dive deeper into it. You try and understand the exact problem. Isolate it. Solve it. And only then can you... Maybe start applying it to a full, complete painting, which I intend on doing, and hopefully you will see the improvement over the next couple of paintings. But in any case, I want to thank you so, so much for watching this video. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. Much, much appreciated. And thank you to anyone who gets a course, uh, one of my courses on uh, you know, watercolor, realism, painting loosely, any of these problems that you may run into. Check out the first links in the description box below. And take control of your watercolor journey. Uh, it will save you tons of time. It get, will get you to a proper level where you can start exploring and actually enjoying the process and becoming creative and allowing yourself to explore that creativity. So in any case, I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and keep painting.